Hey guys, excuse me, I got an itch. Hope everyone's well. So it's a gloomy New Year's Eve here in Los Angeles, and I'm up just past the Bel Air Hotel. This particular street goes all the way into the hills. It just goes into Bel Air, and I'm going to film the home of the late great actor James Kahn. Jimmy Kahn. Let's get the little guy with me. Come on, you. Let's film the street here a little bit. So James Kahn, we know, everybody knows him from The Godfather. You know, the interesting thing, too, about The Godfather is he had other scenes that were filmed, that were excised, that were cut out. And I don't know if he held a grudge to the studio or Coppola the rest of his life, but if you've seen some of the uncut stuff, uh, longer versions, he has other scenes in The Godfather, which are really good. Um, it's basically after his father is shot and he's making all kinds of plans uh, to try to keep his family together and hopefully take care of his father who's in the hospital. Anyway, so um, his father being played by Marilyn Brando, of course. But James Kahn was uh, born in New York to Jewish German immigrants. I think a lot of people, including me, the first time I saw it, probably thought, you know, he played Sonny Corleone so well, probably thought James Caan was Italian, but James Caan was Jewish, Jimmy Caan. And um, married and divorced four times. He, he was that colorful brand of actor that used to exist uh, in the 60s and 70s and famed to have not only hung out at the Playboy Mansion, probably between some of his four marriages, but actually lived at the Playboy Mansion for a while. That must have been quite a life. It's really beautiful and quiet up here. I'm not surprised there's even cars at all. We're coming up to the house here on the left. See the camera with this house right there? He actually had his brother-in-law on title with him at this house for a while, part of a trust. His brother-in-law, who was married to James Kahn's sister, who unfortunately died from leukemia in 1981, I believe, and I think she was only about 38 years old. And here's the home. Now, this was his final home. He did not live here uh, too recently, but it's the only f home of his that I could find here in Los Angeles. That's really beautiful. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he doesn't like it. So some celebrities, no gates. Some there are now. I've seen two security patrols riding through here so far. So there's definitely 24-hour security. On this particular street, by the way, I've also filmed the homes of... Come on, dogs fight me. I've also filmed the homes of uh, John Candy. Let me turn around here. Come on. Let's go to this side. John Candy and Leonard Nimoy lived here. Actually, Leonard Nimoy lived here until he died. So they do have this nice area here blocking, you know, the frontal view of the home. James Kahn took like a five-hour, five-hour, five-year break from acting in the early 80s, and then he came back and did a bunch of films, including a film called Misery, which you should see if you're a James Kahn fan. You should see it anyway, based on a Stephen King book. Come on. And uh, he really wanted to play against type, so he was not a tough guy in this film. He played an author. He was not the first choice the character, although Kathy Bates wasn't the first choice either. You know, rarely are actors, actresses the first choice for the part that they end up playing. Real quiet here. Real quiet. Oh, a car is finally coming. Two. What's a mail truck doing here? It's Sunday. It must be packages. See, it's winter, but the leaves are still turning like they do in fall. 
It's a really nice home. It's very beautiful and kept up nicely. Here's their security sign. It's another view. He wanted to play football in college, but he didn't make the team. It's interesting because the exterior looks a little bit like the old Playboy Mansion used to. Um, of course, the Playboy Mansion has been torn down. Did I say that James Caan had been married and divorced four times? That's Hollywood for you folks. Um, and unfortunately, he his last divorce was uh, about five years prior to his death in 2022. So um, he didn't remarry, but did he have a girlfriend in his late 70s, early 80s? Maybe so. Why not, right? Let's take a look. Another look at the street while I talked. Look at this. This is a nice yard attached to this property up there, huh? Yeah, the scenes of The Godfather. And then, of course, if you've seen Godfather 2, which I hope you have, it's probably the greatest, one of the greatest films of all time. There is a... Uh, Coppola wanted to do a cameo with the actors who are no longer around in the series and bring them back, including Marlon Brando. And it's a scene in which, well, it takes place on uh, December 7th, 1941, the day that Pearl Harbor was born, and Michael telling his brothers that he's joined the Marines. And um, Coppola wanted to bring, you know, Brando back. And have everybody there, obviously Pacino and Duval, who were in Godfather 2, and then um, <clears throat> John Cazell, and he also brought James Caan back. Now, the problem was that Marlon Brando wanted like a million dollars for, I think it was a million, then he wanted for five more minutes of screen time. So they changed the scene, did not hire him back, and basically did... One of these dads coming for dinner, and when he gets here, we're going to yell surprise. And that's what they did. But you can see James Conn there. And every time I see him in that scene, uh, I wish he could have been in Godfather 2. I wish his character wasn't killed off in Godfather 1. I wish, but of course, that's the book for you. I wish he would have had more, uh, more screen time in Godfather 1. But again, like I said... If you look at the complete, the epic versions, some of the versions that aren't, that aren't so cut up, James Conn does have more screen time. Sonny Corleone was a great character, but in the book and the movie, Sonny Corleone has to die so Michael Corleone can ascend to the throne of the Corleone family. Anyway, there's not supposed to be a diatribe about, uh, about the Godfather, but it's become it. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Let's go back and film the house again, okay, Mr. Mister? Look at that beautiful house up on the hill there. Let's see if I can get a shot for you guys. Big house on the hill. Big house. Now, again, folks, this is pretty typical. This is right off Sunset Boulevard. And at the bottom of the hill, we're basically right across from UCLA. One of the entrances to UCLA, we're near Bel Air. But my point is, when you're up on the road here, or up in the canyons here off of Sunset Boulevard, it's one way in, one way out. So God forbid you have a fire up here, you know, you're, you're in trouble. I just passed the famed Bel Air Hotel coming up here. That's very popular for weddings and big parties like that see no parking no parking so you're not supposed to park anywhere on this hill okay let's take a look at the house again oh a car in the driveway I didn't see that before 
Yeah, it's really nice. They still got their Christmas wreath up. He likes it. Once I pass the hedges, we'll take another look. There goes a limo. So they're ferrying somebody away. When you live up here, you can afford to have a limo pick you up. The garage. Garages. Back gate. So I got some lights in the trees. Must be really pretty at night. All right, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's kind of a short video. I... I don't want to give a whole biography of James Kahn. You can look him up. I wanted to show the home and a little bit of this area to you. God, it looks like it's going to rain any second. It's still muddy here because it's been raining kind of off and on the last couple days. It never rains in Southern California. That was a strange song title since it's purely fiction, obviously. All right, guys, Ron here. Good seeing everybody again, metaphorically speaking. And I will see you all at the next location. Please remember to subscribe and like the channel and comment if you see fit. All right. Thanks, guys. See you at the next location.